Ask any photographer, they will have their preferred focal length. Some people like 35 millimeters, some people prefer 50 millimeters, and I'm sure you've even got sociopaths that think they can shoot everything on a 135 millimeter lens. But for me, my favorite focal length would have to be 28 millimeters. A majority of my professional work is all shot with the 28 millimeter focal length, and I actually think it's the best focal length available. And in this video, I'll explain why I think that, some tips on how to get better photos of 28 millimeters and why it's not as hard as some YouTubers make it out to be to shoot with it. If you'd like to see more great photography content, be sure to subscribe. Now, it boils down to three key reasons. So it's dynamic, it's versatile, and it's unique. Let's break these three reasons down. Dynamic, what do I mean by dynamic? Well, see, because it's just a smidge wider than 35 millimeters, which many people consider to be the gold standard of focal length. So images with the 28 millimeter just appear to be more exciting. I mean, just look at this comparison of 28 millimeters versus 35 millimeters. The slightly wider field of view just gives an overall more interesting look to your images, but it's not quite as wide as 24 millimeters, so you don't get any super distracting distortion, especially when photographing people. Throw a bit of movement into the shot and that extra width just becomes even more exciting. I feel like when it comes to capturing the moment, a 28 millimeter lens just feels so perfect for exactly that. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be quite the same as a 50 millimeter plus for portraits, but it's actually really fun to shoot portraits with the 28 millimeter, and I have gotten many, many great portrait photos with it. This neatly comes into my second point, the versatility. So I stand by the fact that you could shoot absolutely anything with a 28 millimeter lens. Landscapes, check. Street, pretty much perfect for that. Events, literally flawless. Portraits too. The only thing I think it might be a little bit challenging for the almighty 28 millimeter is stuff where you need that reach like sports or wildlife photography. And finally, it's unique. In a landscape dominated by the 35 millimeter focal length, the 28 millimeter presents a different view on the world, a slightly wider one. And obviously while this opinion is a little bit polarizing, I just think it's so much more interesting than the 35 millimeter focal length, which just, oh, it's just boring. I mean, you know, who cares, whatever. Like just, it's so much more exciting. I love like 28 versus 35, I, I will, you know, I will die on this hill. I think 28 is just so much better. And look, there is a reason why the Leica Q is a fixed lens 28 millimeter camera. Same with the Ricoh GR cameras. 28 millimeters is an iconic and incredible focal length and one which I think is a lot less scary than some people make it out to be, especially once you have a little bit of practice with it. I'd like to share a few tips with you guys that should hopefully help if you're having problems making the 28 millimeter focal length work. So firstly, while it's certainly not as wide or distorted as a 24 millimeter or wider, it's still wide. So the typical advice when shooting with wider lenses does apply here. Try not to shoot at too much of an angle, otherwise the image, you know, may become distorted and as as well as will your subject as well, unless of course you're going for that. And shooting subjects straight on is a good way to ensure people's facial features and body remain flattering or shoot from a slightly lower angle in order to get a more imposing badass framing to portraits. This works great and I love using this angle for DJ press shots. Although don't go too low because it won't be very flattering. Another great tip for shooting portraits for 28 millimeters is to shoot from a bit further away. So getting full body portraits is a great use of the focal length and it can look especially great if you combine that with a lower down approach as explained earlier. Now, the great thing about 28 millimeters is because it isn't that wide, shooting stuff like landscapes with it is actually fairly straightforward too. So try to make sure your horizon is level, point and shoot. I really wouldn't be overthinking it all that much if you honestly treat it like a more interesting 35 millimeter rather than this crazy unusable focal length you'll have a much better time shooting with it honestly it's all in your head with regards to how difficult it is to actually shoot with in my opinion now let's go over some of my favorite 28 millimeter lenses so i have to say that the 28 millimeter equivalent lens that is in the gr cameras is just so great whether it be the lens in the grd or in the aps-c sensor gr both are just awesome the GR line of cameras have, for the longest time, had absolutely incredible 28 millimeter focal length lenses. And honestly, up until the Leica Q came out, they were the gold standard of what a 28 millimeter focal length should be. Sharp, exciting, and full of so much character. Not to mention, they were also bloody tiny too, which was great as well. And then Leica released the Q, and all of a sudden, a new king was crowned. 
The Q's 28mm f1.7 Summer Luxe lens is mwah, in terms of performance, and at the asking price of nearly seven grand brand new, that is to be expected. The great thing about the Q is that while the newer Q2 and Q3 both command a very high price still, you can now find the original Q for not that much money. I mean, relatively speaking, it's still a Leica, so it's still going to cost you around two and a half to 2.8 thousand Australian dollars, but hey, that's like within reach for most people who might be cross shopping with a new Fuji body or something. And all of the Qs share the exact same stunning lens. So the only benefit you get from buying the more modern cameras is just more megapixels on the sensor. But I can assure you that the original Q is still a stellar camera. But say you don't want a Q, either because you can't fit it into your budget or the idea of spending that much money on a camera with a lens that is fixed keeps you up at night. Well, then let me introduce you to my next favorite 28 millimeter lens, the Fujifilm 18 millimeter 1.4 WR. In fact, it's filming me right now. <laughs> so I made a video all about this lens and it is just exceptional. It is without a doubt, probably my most used lens on my Fuji cameras, right next to the 16 to 55 2.8 and I cannot live without it. So I shoot all of my event work with it and I use it as a general walk around lens as well. If you're with Fuji and you want to get something with a bit less perfection and a little bit more character, Fuji's 18 f2 is a cracker option too and can be had for very, very little money. Just be aware that the autofocus is noisy and slow, but if you can tolerate it, you'll be rewarded with a tiny little pancake lens that can deliver just stunning, characterful 28mm photos. What do you guys think? Are you a 28mm fanatic? Do you also love it like I do? Or what is your preferred focal length? At the end of the day, the best focal length really is the one you're most comfortable shooting with. That just so happens to be 28 millimeters for me, but I think people who shy away from trying it out are really missing out on some of the most fun you can have with photography. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.